So I'm going to start with one word without sounding like a nutty professor at the same time, and that is neurodiversity. And like I said, without over complicating it, it's actually quite simple. Neuro brain diversity, as everyone knows, is differences, correct? However, the actual neuro neurodiversity movement is defined as more of a recognition and respecting neurological differences. And it's kind of a loose term, but if you take it a little bit further, it looks at learning differences and disabilities, such as dyslexia, or autism, and so on and so forth. And another way of putting it in perspective is I asked for an expert opinion from a guy that I respect very well, um, a guy called Jonathan Beebe, ironically from Southampton. He states that, aren't we all very different physically? So we recognise that because we can see that. But when it comes to neurological differences, it's actually quite obvious. When, you, when, we, when we talk, we process information differently. Uh, hopefully you process this somewhat similarly. And the way some people are more visual and some people are more auditory. Some people are bigger picture fingers. Some people are extroverted. Some people are introverted. And he really puts it in perspective when you really think, if we are all different physically, aren't we all neurologically? And it is backed up by science in genetics and a lot of other sciences as well. So you're probably thinking, why is he droning on about this? Cool. Um, it's actually not as simple as just applying it to the world and respecting each other. Not, not, not quite. So when you think of disability, we think normally physically, because we can see that. For example, all the stairs in here, if you are physically disabled, the reason you're disabled is because the stairs are there in the first place. It's not because you can't go up and down them. It's because we, as a society, have built them in the first place to disable others. Um, another example is... Buses originally never had um, hydraulics. Eventually, they, they started to bring them down because of you know, age and physical disabilities. It's so commonplace, and people understood it more, they started to bring it down to sort of curb level, and hydraulics was a great solution for that. But again, looking at neurological stuff, it's invisible. And especially within um, education and employment, we look at um, dyslexia and communication difficulties that can arise through autism and other learned differences as well. There's a really big, interesting statistic when you look at dyslexia itself. 50% of those are, like myself, have visual stress elements. And one of the common things is colour and font. Black on white is the default and it's the most annoying thing in the world. And it's just things that we have to deal with every single day. And white and black sometimes can be the same thing, but everybody, again, within the dyslexia sphere is also individual. So you kind of have neuro in diversity and then like a neuro in diversity in, inside it at the same time. It gets a bit complicated when you think it like that, but it's actually quite simple. We are all, again, different, but in other contexts, we're different inside that label. So, when we move on to another example of where this can be a problem, technology. We all use technology on our iPhones, no doubt, um, on the computers. You, def you guys probably definitely have smartphones knowing your ages. And when you go onto the BBC article, and it's, again, black and white, um, you have to normally find a third-party um, product or an overlay or something to help you deal with that. Normally expensive and normally have to get assessed and all these scenarios I've had to go through myself for education and kind of failed miserably or did I fail miserably or was it the education system kind of failed me because it was set up in a way that didn't cater for what I actually needed at the time. Things have, you know, improved nowadays but it's still very difficult. So if we look at, that's the UK 3.3 million people that would have the same difficulties as, as me. In the USA, 25 million. Around the world, if you know, everyone was connected to the internet and wasn't like, water famine and food famine, that would be 350 million people. And as we're an ever-increasing connected world, it becomes more of a more pressing issue. So, when you think, put this all together, I had to f f figure out through research and study in university, whether it was 
um, programming languages, how the world works, and understanding how the social model of disability works, and neurodiversity works, eventually came out of an approach to technology, and it was called neuroindividualism. And then I applied that to building what I'm going to call a new system. So when you go through the system that I've built, every website you look at, every document you look at on the cloud, on every website, will automatically change to every individual with artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is good because it learns each individual's own preferences. That's the basis of it without actually trying to go through all the science and going through exactly how it works. I can't physically show you. However, I'm not blaming the BBC or blaming society per se. It would be impossible to completely um, cater to every individual in this society that has a difficulty or disability. What I'm saying is there's a market for it that I'm trying to fill without going through the difficulties and ex exploiting them with you know, high expenses. And I think when you really, really, really think about it, if any of you have um, a difficulty yourself or a learning disability or anything like that, it's not necessarily because you're quote-unquote sick or ill or just have a defect. What if it's because, you know, some things are set up in a certain way that doesn't actually cater for you? So that's one message I want you to leave with. The second one, which kind of emulates that, is you must have heard the phrase don't judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. Because if you do, it will believe it's stupid for the rest of its life. It's as simple as that. And the last message I want to say is, technology is more and more increasing. Um, its individual, individualism is completely going above and beyond. Think of virtual reality, think of artificial reality, and augmented reality. It, it's it's all becoming around you as a person rather than just you adapting, uh, the, you adapting to technology. Technology will adapt to you in the future. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you.